Good afternoon, this is Jonathan Satofsky of Satofsky Asset Management, March 16, 2017, wanting to provide a video blog update. Two topics I want to talk about today, one being the Federal Reserve and the second being emerging markets. So yesterday the Federal Reserve with uh, wide expectations raised interest rates and the concept here is to tighten money supply a little bit as the economic conditions have been improving and we want to make sure that we don't go through too far of an extended boom and bust cycle. So they try to do it at a moderated pace to see how much the economy can absorb higher rates and see how it filters through. At the moment, the expectation is possibly two or three more hikes might be in store through the course of the year. And it's a tightrope that the Federal Reserve needs to ride of tightening enough to let conditions continue to grow, not tightening so much that you cause a recession. So. You know, there are going to be times they overshoot or undershoot and, you know, leads to, you know, uh, some boom and bust cycles. And um, that's to be expected. That's just part of the course. But, um, you know, so far so good. The response globally was uh, booming financial markets yesterday in the U.S. and abroad. So uh, it was received uh, quite positively. So let's talk about performance and emerging markets specifically. You know, the last... Um, decade has been uh, actually quite favorable for the U.S. markets, um, but has not been quite as favorable for foreign markets. And what we've seen recently is um, very positive inflows into U.S. assets and actually people then abandoning emerging markets, which is um, not to be surprised if you study behavioral economics. Um, in fact, I'm giving a speech uh, at the University of Michigan in the end of March, which I'm sort of excited about. This is a passion of mine, talking about the idea of behavioral finance. The question is, does brilliance lead to blindness? And how do I uh, help people avoid this behavioral gap of um, 2 to 6% where they earn less than their investments? So I'll lead that into the story of emerging markets. The five-year period from 2011 to 2015, emerging markets were down 4.5% a year, while the U.S. markets were up 126 if you asked me, how, how am I doing? And I told you I was, you know, down 4.5% a year, you would say I'm finding another financial advisor. Uh, you're an idiot. If I told you you were up 128 you would say he was a genius. Now, I don't put everything in the S&P 500 nor in emerging markets because I don't want to be a genius or an idiot. I'm just similarly trying to ride the tightrope of being smart enough to help people reach their goals and diversifying appropriately. But this is an important lesson because if you look at the history of emerging markets, 13 years out of 28 years, the emerging markets had negative returns. If you look at the U.S. markets, five years out of 28 years, the U.S. markets, as measured by the S&P 500, had negative returns. So if I pose the question to you, which performed better during the 28 years, what do you think you would say? Well, of course, it's a trick question. Emerging markets. Emerging markets average 10.5% a year, outperforming uh, the U.S. markets. The question is, who had the fortitude to be able to sit on that long enough to enable them to get those returns? So a lot of patience and discipline is required in whatever you own to be able to see the fruits of your labor. And highlighting why we own emerging markets is... Um, no short of looking at the decade of the 2000s. From 2000 to 2009, the U.S. markets returned next to nothing, negative returns, negative 0.9%, while emerging markets averaged 10% a year. That has been the absolute opposite since 2009, when it, after 10 years, people said, I'm never investing in the U.S. markets again. Well, now people are you know, rotating in the other direction, saying, ah, I'm giving up on emerging markets. So don't get too high or too low on the ups and downs and uh, the volatility in the market and the noise and maintain a disciplined diversified approach and good habits and guardrails of saving enough and you know keeping within a two to three percent spend rate and you'll be guarded from whatever occurs in the world and uh, be able to enjoy uh, your time and energy on the passions that you want to pursue with that have a wonderful have a wonderful day and a wonderful week